The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, neurosurgeon in Fort Wayne, Indiana, for 41 years, but I'm only 39 years old. <laughs> I'm a, neuro a neurosurgeon, obviously, but I tell you, wellness is my passion. Uh, I like to be called Dr. Wellness. I do a lot of wellness teaching in all aspects of wellness, actually. But tonight, we have this wonderful subject of reversing uh, type 2 diabetes uh, in 90 days, uh, in about 60, 90 days, I would say 90% of the time. I've looked up the literature, it's based on Franklin House's book, uh, a lot of uh, Dr. Barnard's book, Dr. Dean Ornish's uh, 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 book, uh, a lot of literature backing us up and it's been uh, my experience. Uh, with me t tonight uh, with Kathy uh, Paleo. Paleo, she works with Dr. Karras, an uh, endocrinologist at Lufen Hospital, a, one, a wonderful doctor, uh, and, uh, and Kathy is a physician assistant, a PA. And she is really living in the world of diabetes, has a tremendous amount of experience, and it's my pleasure to have you with me tonight. Thank you. And uh, what I would like you uh, uh, to tell me is when you first meet a, uh, a diabetic patient, uh, how do you start? How do you, how do you speak to them, Kathy? When I first meet them, I try to learn their story. Every patient I see has a story. And unless you know their story, you cannot treat them and uh, be successful in treating them. So you have to know what their life is all about, what their personal life. God, I love those words. And I'll tell you why, because I've learned over the years, the first thing that I say to a patient, unless they fell off an airplane, Kathy, I say, and what's going on in your life? And you know, they lead you to the diagnosis. There's no mystery there. I, I love those words of yours. So let's go through the uh, world of diabetes uh, here a little bit. Uh, I uh, have written a book, The Secret of Reversing Type 2 Diabetes, uh, in 60 days, 90% of the time. Uh, it's based on a great many authors in Franklin House's book, The 30-Day Miracle, on, on page uh, 76 of his book, but he describes a way of eating exactly what I teach at Leuven Hospital. Uh, and I yoga instructors myself, we give 12 lectures, uh, and we've had a, a great deal of success. I just had two patients the other day walk up to me, one lost 30 pounds, one lost 40 pounds, and you know what, Kathy? Their diabetes is gone. I mean, just think of the miracle. And this is, is uh, 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 unbelievable. Uh, and, uh, and I've written other books, and I quickly go through this. I call them the Magic Five from the, from the, the Psychology of Eating, Motivation, Secret and Diet for Adults, One for Children, and Reversing Type 2 uh, Diabetes. I just throw that out there so people, and they're available on Amazon or my Mind Body Institute at uh, Lufen Hospital. Uh, let's go through uh, why is it so important to reverse t type 2 diabetes. But I'd like to repeat that it's possible to do that. That is extremely important that you can motivate the patient to do it and get this monkey off your back. And uh, that is the beauty, I think, of our discussion. I mean, why do this? We have 30,000 patients in this country that lose vision every year because of diabetes or the retinal disease, uh, and many more cataracts and, and, and mild forms of vascular disease, but people come totally blind from this disease that's reversible a lot of times. Obesity, 30% of the U.S. is now obese, overweight, about 60%. And type 2 diabetes, where we secrete too much uh, insulin instead of type 1, where we uh, uh, don't secrete uh, enough insulin, uh, type 2 is reversible. Type 1 is very rarely uh, uh, re reversible. Uh, so, uh, and we have so many more teenagers becoming obese today. And I, I think in your experience, Kathy, you found you're seeing a lot of teenagers, aren't you? Yes. 
And, uh, and this is a frightening condition because, first of all, they, they're going to get heart attacks and strokes in their 30s and 40s, become blind in their 40s and 50s, start amputations uh, in the 50s and in, in the uh, uh, 60s. Heart attacks are quite common in diabetic patients. Uh, they, don't, they have no warning. They, they, uh, they may not even know it. They may be in pre-diabetic stage. They grab their chest and they die. That's, that's not uncommon in, in, in diabetes, I understand. 75% of diabetics eventually die from a heart attack, and some of them at a younger age. And I, they, uh, no, Sometimes no. that's the first time they know they're diabetic when they come in with a heart attack. Yeah, did, did we hear that clearly? I mean, this clearly is the point. The first symptom of type 2 diabetes many time is the heart attack. Uh, and some survive it and some don't. Uh, there's a high incidence of paralysis and strokes and vascular disease. And the reason being is that the fat on your body makes about 20 nasty chemicals that cause inflammation, cancer, autoimmune uh, disease, vascular disease, strokes, heart attacks. Uh, and that's the reason you need to get the fat off your body. Because fat isn't just some quiet thing that sits in your body. Uh, uh, fat has some nasty chemicals in it, especially abdominal fat, especially mm -hmm. abdominal fat in men. A pot belly is a very dangerous uh, thing. Uh, and once you start on extremity amputations, I didn't really understand it uh, to the point that I saw it the other day. I saw a patient uh, who had, had amputated his foot and had a serious vascular disease and, uh, and uh, had been riding around on a moped, was on, was on Coumadin, and, I mean, very, and he did not survive it. But uh, the wife reminded me, once you amputate your leg, your life expectancy for one year, I'm not going to even mention the figure because people out there may be frightened. Uh, the figure is, I mean, your life expectancy is not good. So prevention is what we're talking about tonight. Uh, and let's uh, go on here. The golden opportunity. We have a golden opportunity in diabetes, and that's the pre-diabetic state. Uh, what's your experience, Kathy, with pre-diabetes? Is that missed a lot? I think it is. I think everybody looks for a certain number, a blood sugar number. Um, I think our biggest challenge is preventing pre-diabetes. Absolutely. That's the golden opportunity. Uh, and, and what are hints that you have type 2 diabetes? If you have metabolic syndrome, uh, elevated uh, blood pressure, high triglycerides, uh, uh, low uh, HDL, high LDL, the lousy cholesterol, hi hypertension, insulin resistance, which we'll talk about more. And, and a, you know a test I order a lot, and it, not many people order it, I don't know why. Uh, that's a serum insulin. I order that on everybody. And, and the reason being is if you're pre-diabetic, your blood sugar may still be normal, but your insulin level is high. And your insulin, is, that indicates a pre-diabetic state. I had a patient recently at operating on his back, but he, his waistline was, was way over 40, 43 or 4. I checked his serum insulin. You know what happened? All his other tests, triglycerides, uh, blood pressure, HDL, L, everything was borderline. And that's the purpose of the metabolic syndrome, to uh, let you know uh, that there's something not quite right here. And you know what was tremendously elevated? The serum insulin. He was a pre-diabetic. I, I really saved his life. The back operation didn't save his life, but that I diagnosed the pre-diabetic state uh, really is, is going to, and, and since I've uh, seen him, uh, he likes me, he's lost 30, 40 pounds. Uh, he's coming out of the pre-diabetic uh, 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 state. See, insulin is destructive to the human body, cause of vascular disease, dementia, obesity, cancer, strokes, heart attacks, uh, and the insulin level runs high because you're trying to push your sugar into the cell to get some energy. We'll discuss that in more uh, detail. Look at waist size. If you're over 40 for a man, you, you could be uh, pre-diabetic. If you're over 35 for a woman, you could be pre-diabetic. Watch teenage obesity. Uh, if your child is overweight, you gotta check the, the uh, body mass index or the waistline. If you go into pediatrician and he, and he doesn't tell you the BMI or measures the waistline, go to a different doctor. He's, that's the first thing. A pediatrician should be a wellness doctor. That's his job. And, uh, and so all physicians, including myself as a neurosurgeon, uh, I find wellness to be exciting because I can, you know, can help people. How do you motivate somebody, Kathy? How do you motivate somebody? Part. I try to find out what's important in their life and why they want to do better. Uh, they, they have to be motivated. They can't do it for us. They, can't, they need to motivate from inside themselves. And that is a big part of a lot of the diabetic institutes now. They're teaching healthcare providers to do motivational interviewing and using the chronic disease model, the long-term model yeah. to treat. But they, you have to motivate and you have to find out why this person wants to improve their health. 
Uh, one way I found, and see if you haven't found it either, by mentioning what could happen. You know, and a lot of them don't have a realistic picture of what could happen. I mean, there's increased rate of cancer due to obesity, the fat chemicals in fat, uh, they, in, they can develop diabetic peripheral neuropathy uh, due to a poor blood supply, uh, the, the nerves die out, they come in uh, with numbness in their legs, uh, they, be, uh, they come in pain in their legs. Frankly, that's what leads to amputation. That indicates vascular disease, and if you have diabetic neuropathy long enough, they're going to start cutting off your toes and your ankles and, uh, and, and, and your legs. It happens. We want to prevent that. We want to prevent that. And uh, uh, also, there's an increased rate of dementia and Alzheimer's disease in people that are overweight and are diabetic. There's an increased rate. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, diabetic type 2 diabetics commonly develop a kidney disease, need dialysis, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, they lose their kidneys, and, 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 and most of the time that's near the end. And not all the time, they can live a long time, but still, you want to prevent that. We want to prevent that. Skin diseases and diabetics are common. Tell us what kind of skin diseases you see. A lot of people have um, uh, dark skin on their, below their knee, on their leg. We have a lot of teenagers that have type 1 that have, uh, looks like scarring on the front of their legs. And a lot of people have um, fungal infections that don't go away. Uh, so I think it's just important to do a whole body check. But I think the wellness is definitely a big part of it. And we should look at it as health care and not medical care, I think. So a lot of physicians want to treat rather than prevent and look at the wellness. What a beautiful statement. A prescription is not the answer here. That's not the answer. And uh, Dr. Uh, I'd like to mention his name, Dr. Terrell Bond, a, a very, a very nice black family doctor in the inner city, wrote the most beautiful article in this uh, month's uh, uh, medical journal, the, the Medical Society. And you know what the name of the article was? The Prescription. And, and he's trying to say is, it doesn't always need to have a medicine on it. It could have on it, uh, uh, eat a vegetarian diet, uh, 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 exercise regularly, written right on the prescription. Uh, and that's what they used to do in the old days. Now it's a pill. And, uh, and uh, the pill is not the answer to type 2 diabetes. It's getting their weight down, exercise, stress reduction, and get rid of the disease. We want that monkey off your back. That's what I'm trying to do here uh, today. Uh, here's some pictures uh, of uh, Kathy before and after. And tell us your, your story a little bit. Maybe uh, I have to take a tiny bit of credit. Tell me how this story of yours started. Well, I uh, went to graduate school to become a nurse practitioner, and I had a lot of stress eating. So I went from probably 180 pounds up to 300 pounds. And I traveled worldwide, and the more I traveled, the more I ate, the more I stressed, went to school. And I decided when I was 45 years old, my mother had type 2 diabetes, and as a healthcare provider, if I didn't follow what I told patients to do, then I wouldn't be credible. So from 45 to 50, I ate a more healthy diet, became more active, and ended up losing 100 pounds for my 50th birthday. And then I watched you do some ballroom dancing and got into the ballroom dance arena and lost 30 more pounds, started long distance running, and lost another 30. So I lost 160. and. That I kept that off for five years now. So, I mean, you just look. Just look at this picture, and, I, and I, I'll say I remember this day. It's been three, four years ago, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. That uh, we had uh, Dancing with the Stars at the, one of my uh, uh, wellness studios in the in the Desoto building, and I remember to this day you and your friend coming up, and we spoke a little bit how to, how to get healthy, and 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 uh, we were doing. And, and you said, "How should I exercise? How about ballroom dancing?" And now Kathy is a, the st a state ballroom dancer champion. Uh, adult in, in the state of Ohio, isn't that something? And she's going to be teaching ballroom dancing at the Cashman Mind Body Institute starting June 1. God, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I, I'm going to be there myself. Okay. I'm going to be there myself. Uh, this is uh, great because exercise is part of getting, uh, uh, it's very important for diabetics to exercise at least uh, once or twice a day. Nice. That's very important. To be more active. That's to be what more I always active. tell them. I yeah. never use the words diet and exercise yeah. with my patients. I tell them to be more active and to yeah. be mindful of what they eat. Yeah. yeah, mindfulness is, is a big thing. Tell us a minute about how, how do you interpret mindfulness? Mindfulness is being aware of what you eat. And you have to look at what you eat, think of how it's prepared. Um, I tell patients to take their favorite dish 
and make it in a more healthy way, prepare it in a more healthy way. But be, being mindful is just being aware of how much, uh, what types of food you're eating, reading labels. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. And mindfulness, because I use it in some uh, pain lectures also, mm -hmm. it, to me is really to look at the food, look, look at the fork, uh, look at the plate. How often do we eat and not really look at the food? Uh, really have a look at it, and that really reminds you of what you should be eating, not be eating, uh, and it's relaxing. It be, to be mindful throughout her life, also it's relaxing. Yes. You know, we walk through the woods, in and in this morning I took a walk, in a, and I really looked at the trees, I looked at the leaves, I looked at the flowers, I spoke to the flowers. That's being mindful. It's very relaxing. It's a very relaxing thing to do. So mindfulness is very important. We need to bring it you know, into our lives. I'd like to show this other picture of you uh, uh, da uh, dancing. Actually, <laughs> believe it or not, you didn't know it. One of my relatives <laughs> and, uh, uh, right there. What a, what a great uh, picture. And I think we have another one. I mean, just look at this beautiful girl. And, uh, and, the, and uh, let's go on with type 2 diabetes. Remember, type 1 diabetes uh, is uh, where, uh, mostly in children, but it can happen as an adult also, where the pancreas uh, is affected maybe by a virus, maybe an autoimmune disease, and you don't secrete insulin. There's a lack of insulin, and we have to take insulin shots or uh, some other way of uh, getting it. Uh, that's 10% of the diabetics. It's only 10%. Type 2 uh, is too much insulin. It's uh, too much uh, uh, insulin. Uh, and uh, and it's, the reason is due to its insulin resistance. I'm going to have a very nice demonstration illustration here to show you uh, that type 2 diabetics become type 1. This is instant. If you're type 2 diabetes long enough, 90% of them uh, will become type 1 diabetics. Now, besides taking pills, they got to take shots. That's avoidable, not every time, but uh, uh, many, many times. And uh, so type 2 diabetes can be prevented, stopped, reversed uh, a high percentage of the time. Uh, don't accept normal blood sugar with meds as the end point. That's a huge statement. That's a huge statement. That's what you talk about. Yeah. Don't accept normal blood sugar and medication. Don't accept that because your insulin level is still high. If you ran a serum insulin, it'd be elevated. And insulin is destructive to the human body. Cancer, dementia, uh, vascular disease, strokes, heart disease, amputations, blindness, renal disease. Don't accept medication and a normal blood sugar is being the answer. Am I right about that, Kathy? Right. It's lifestyle change. It's lifestyle, yes. You gotta change the, the lifestyle. And uh, so type 2 diabetes can be improved in some cases, really, though. We become a type 1 diabetic. It, you have a, maybe a day or two to, to, to change it, but it's extremely rare. Uh, you, you can get rid of type 2 diabetes, I believe, 89% of the time. Not everybody wouldn't necessarily agree with that, Dr. House does, I do. And, uh, and no one knows the exact percentage, but it's a high percentage. Would you agree with that, Kathy? Right. If, if they do the lifestyle uh, changes. So proper eating, not dieting, is the answer. That's my point. Uh, for example, uh, I, in, in my books, I teach uh, vegetarian, vegan, flexitarian, high-dense, nutritarian way of eating. You have, a, yes. you have a choice here. But if you uh, do that 80 90% of the time, uh, you're going to get vascular disease, decreased rate of dementia, you're going to avoid uh, diabetes, uh, and your appetite will change. Because I have people say to me, there's no way I cannot eat fatty meat. You can in about two months. I myself, if I look at a hamburger today, I can see the fat. I'm starting to see fat in salmon. I can't believe it. And uh, yeah, I, I went to the restaurant recently and ordered the salmon for lunch with avocado. That's all pretty fatty stuff. Yes. And I could see it. I couldn't eat it this instant. Your, your taste buds will change. But for lunch today, I had a pile of food because I've had the doctor's lounge change. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. And, <laughs> you know, because I had a very slowly done. And you can have a plate of food like this, all dense nutrient foods, foods of color. They look yes. like your, your uh, uh, beautiful sweater. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, foods of color. And, and you can eat pounds of food. You will not gain weight doing that. And that's what uh, Dr. Furman teaches. A lot of people teach that. Psychology of eating. Let's talk about that a little bit. Food's a drug. It, it's, it's like a narcotic uh, because uh, it causes secretion of serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline, feel-good chemicals. You, you want to feel good, quickly eat some nasty food. You'll f feel better quickly, but the blood sugar will rise quickly and then drop like a stone, and you'll be hungry again. Uh, no question, it relieves stress. So you have to watch that you're not a stress eater. Being a neurosurgeon and writing books and all these things that I do, you, you know, no doubt I get stressed. But I have other ways of treat, dealing with it now, exactly. you know, from from uh, meditation to breathing techniques. I might have a, an apple or a banana laying in the car. I have some 
almonds there, can take eat five or six nuts, some appetite, you know, goes away. And uh, so uh, f f food's a drug, you have to remember that. Uh, a lot of people overweight, uh, that that's really is their psychology. They're stressed out people. And uh, the most common cause of stress, uh, sign of stress, is a pot belly. It's because stress secretes steroids uh, in, in, in your blood, and these are glucocorticoids, and they increase your appetite. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, they, and they store the fat. It's not that the tiger's running at you, uh, and you're using up energy. Uh, we're chronically stressed. We're not moving. Steroids are high. We're not moving. We, and we eat, and it gets stored. And d type 2 diabetes is, is the uh, reward. Uh, Rudy's rule, take a minute before every meal and visualize your intention. What's your intention here? Right. A good habit. If you sit down and kind of just take a minute, maybe say a prayer or whatever, and, but, but think about, hey, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do here today before that gets wiped out with a glass of wine? You know what I mean? Then your judgment changes before you know what you're eating and everything and move it. And uh, remember your goal is no diabetes, no death at a young age, no blindness, no strokes, no sudden heart attack. That's why Kathy and I are sitting here today. We're trying to get you motivated to change uh, the way you live. Let's talk about evolution of food. I mean, how did this happen to us? Uh, for example, in Kenya in 1954, uh, in Africa, they couldn't find a person that had a heart attack or a stroke to show the med students. Yet, I moved to Washington, D.C., uh, and I was a resident in neurosurgery there at Georgetown, uh, and, and I was taking a brain hemorrhage for hypertension, uh, especially in the inner city population, two a day. They were eating the mad, sad, toxic American diet. That was really the problem. It's not taught. It's not taught in the schools, uh, and uh, it, it's not generally taught. So they don't know better. But in Kenya, that di disease that did not exist. And it happened from the evolution of food because there are certain populations, uh, Africans, uh, South Americans, Japanese, and Micronesians have in them what's called the thrifty gene. Now, what's that? Well, 100,000 years ago, people would run across the plane to catch an animal to eat it. They would catch it. They eat the whole thing. They wouldn't eat again for a month. And they're the ones that survived. The ones that couldn't eat again for a month, stored all that uh, fat and food uh, in them, they survived. So they were selected by evolution. A lot of those people in the world today, like the Pima Indians in Mexico, when they're eating the, the plant diet, they don't have our diseases. They moved to Arizona, 90% are diabetic, Kathy. 90% are diabetic, have hypertension. And their kids in Arizona, it's even worse. And it's strictly, they have that gene that is expressed by fat, salt, and sugar. They don't eat fat, salt, and sugar. They don't have the disease. Very simple. Very, very interesting, mm -hmm. isn't it, Kathy? Yes. And, uh, and you see certain ethnic population, racial populations, yeah. don't you, Kathy, that have my, much higher rates of type right. 2 diabetes, right. don't you? Yeah. Is that African your Americans, Hispanics, and now Asians. Yeah, Af yeah. Hispanics, Asians, uh, they have that thrifty gene. Very common. Uh, and, they, and, and, and if you're overweight, you're going to be diabetic. Don't do it because it'll cut years off your life and you'll have those nasty diseases that we talked about. A hundred years ago, we started stripping nutrients of, uh, food, uh, in food processing. Uh, and uh, and it, it, we ref, you know, refined things. Yes. We took the fiber off of there. Now we're eating pure sugar. We're eating a piece of white bread. That's pure sugar. We're eating white rice. That's pure sugar. We need to keep the fiber on there. Uh, and food processing increased uh, uh, type 2 diabetic uh, yes. rate uh, you know, uh, tremendously. And uh, what was the diet of our ancestors? Nuts, berries, vegetables, low-fat meat. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get these diseases. The China study by Colin Powell, a great book to read, studied one billion Chinese people. Would you believe it? And they could relate their diet uh, and their diseases together. They found if they're eating a high-fat diet in the inner cities, uh, they were getting all that uh, fat diseases, diabetes, a heart attack. They were dying at a young age and yet the cancer, they went to other cities where they eat a vegetarian diet, farming communiques, they, they had none of these illnesses. Uh, that proved it. The China study is a great book uh, uh, to read. So uh, our, our immediate prim primate ancestors, the monkeys uh, and the orangutans, they eat only eat fruit, they only eat fruit. Which reminds me, I have a baby orangutan coming to the zoo in a month from Fort Wayne to go visit it and say, and, and tell them that uh, when you see the little baby orangutan, tell them you know their dad, Dr. Rudy. Yeah, I, I, I bought the privilege. It was given to me as a gift. Uh, it's coming from Sumatra. And, uh, and this little baby orangutan say, say, hi, George. I know your dad. <laughs> no, and uh, and uh, I take an interest in these animals and, uh, because they're vegetarians. They're, they're vegetarians. Uh, there hasn't been enough time in terms of evolution to change our bodies. That's why we're sick. Uh, that's why we're sick. We're eating, we're eating the wrong food.
Now we need to eat it in its most natural form. Exactly. And what does insulin do? It, insulin transport sugar into the cells. And uh, how? They, on, and I'm going to show you an illustration in a minute. Uh, in your cell, there's your receptor sites, uh, and insulin picks up the sugar and has to put it in the cell. Fat can transport into the cell without going through a receptor, but insulin uh, has to move sugar into the cell. And uh, how does fat cause insulin resistance in the cells? I'll show you the, the illustration in a second. It prevents insulin receptors from working properly. And the reason they don't work properly, and here's this beautiful illustration I want you to see, uh, and you can see inside the cell, Oxygen and sugar make your ATP. That's your gasoline. That's the energy. This is one cell. We got 70 trillion of them. And you see these little receptors, those purple things out there. Uh, those is where our drugs generally uh, work, our chemicals uh, work. But fat can pass through that cell wall where it doesn't have to open a door. But uh, uh, sugar has to transport, uh, uh, be transported by insulin. Now, if you have insulin resistance and the fat makes these receptor sites uh, very sticky and the, and the sugar can't get in there, guess what the pancreas does? Secretes insulin like anything. Huge amounts of insulin. Remember what I said insulin causes? Fast disease, diabetes, uh, dementia, autoimmune diseases, uh, and you don't want to keep that insulin level low. So this is the transport system. This is an illustration of insulin resistance. I, 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 I'm ashamed to say I've never met a type 2 diabetic who could tell me what insulin resistance is. It's not the patient's fault. It's our fault. It's our fault. They need to know this because once they see this illustration and realize what fat does to them, that's a motivator. This illustration, I think, is a motivator. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and here's, you know, the door. With, you see the door there where the uh, sugar uh, goes in. And uh, metabolic syndrome, we hear a lot about it. Fifty million people have it. Half of people with metabolic syndrome, uh, that was described by Dr. Raven, uh, will uh, develop uh, type 2 diabetes, 50%. And the rest get vascular disease and hypertension and cancer. And how it characterizes metabolic syndrome, and many patients have it and are not aware of it. That patient I talked about operating on his back, he had metabolic syndrome. No one recognized it. High triglycerides, uh, hypertension, insulin resistance, which we talked about, you know what it is now. Low HDL, the good cholesterol that cleans your arteries out. High LDL, the one that paints your arteries, makes it worse. And a waistline over 40 and then 35 uh, for women. And uh, remember, we talked about the body mass, body mass index. You need to know what that is. If you're a child, if we take them to a doctor, you need to know what it is. If your doctor is not keeping a graft on your child's BMI, you should say, please, would you please do that? Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, because it's very important for you to know. So metabolic syndrome, the triglycerides in the blood, cause fat storage in the cells. It can increase cell size. You can increase, you don't make more fat cells, but you increase them tremendously in size. They can increase a thousand times. So fat in the cells prevents insulin receptors from working and shut down the transport system. So it's about the fat on the receptors, but also remember, fat can go right through the cell membrane inside the cell. It, it prevents the receptors uh, from working and opening the door. And, uh, Cells are many brains. They're very complex. We could talk about them for a month. They're very complex, but I'm telling you the most important part. So insulin increases fat deposits, increases vascular uh, uh, resistance. Uh, this is an important point, and I think if you see if you agree, uh, Kathy, uh, the answer to stopping, preventing, and reversing type 2 diabetes, carbohydrates do not cause diabetes. Right. Correct. You I know, agree. You know, Atkins died, the teacher, don't eat carbs. Uh, this, 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 Dr. Uh, Furman, Dr. Barnard said that, that that's a fraud. It's right in the book, and it's not something that, that I made up. And so low carbohydrates are not uh, correct. But the, the point is they should eat healthy, complex, low glycemic index carbohydrates. What's glycemic index? Uh, you can uh, Google that, low glyce uh, glycemic index. It comes from Australia. You can look at any food and, and see how, if you eat it, how quickly it raises the blood sugar. Uh, for example, white bread, bang, it would go right up. Uh, if you ate a piece of fruit, it, it, it'd probably be like 35 in the glycemic index. It's zero to 100, incidentally. And you ought to eat things that are under 50. Now, carrots actually are 70, but you're not going to eat a lot of carrots. So eat your carrots. And, uh, uh, but you want to try to eat foods mainly that are under 50. And if foods have fiber in them, they have not been stepped to the fiber, most of those are under 50. A bean would right. like be, be 20 or 10. And a bean is a very healthy food. Uh, so the, to know what your foods are in the glycemic index, if you're uh, type 2 diabetic, very important, very important. Uh, 
and eating the good fats, which are the omega-3s and, right. and the healthy fats. We all need some fats, but we only need a 20% fat diet. In America, we're eating a 40% fat diet. Fat, salt, and sugar are your enemies. You go to fast food restaurants, that's what you get most of the time. That's what makes things uh, taste good to people, but very dangerous. Uh, and don't eat a high-protein diet. Uh, of Dr. Axkins and Dr. Bernstein, and like I said, other books I've read uh, said they're fraud because, pro uh, because protein from animals carries with it a lot of fat. Correct. And uh, it's, it's my uh, vegetables have all the protein, amino acids in them that you need. The, the American Dietetic Association, the Canadian Dietetic Association says if you eat a balanced vegetarian diet, even for a child, you get all the proteins that you need. Yeah. I, I have their papers at home. It proves the point. It's out of the Notre Dame training book. You don't need to take supplements. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I know at Lufthansa there was a, a, a doctor who really wasn't too interested in, follow, in losing weight. He said, I gotta have my protein. I gotta have my protein. Surely that person does not understand that the protein in plants is totally adequate. You don't eat animal protein because it's got fat in it. And, uh, yes. and uh, but to eat some some uh, uh, meat, fish, occasional steak, whatever, twice a week, generally you can get away with it if your figures are normal. Right. If you're way out of whack, you ought to skip that business uh, for a while. And uh, fat is the grease in the cell that locks up the insulin receptor. We talked about that. It locks the door to the cell from inside and outside. We have that illustration that proves that. Uh, this is interesting. Slightly overweight can be the start of insulin resistance. Is that right, Kathy? Yes, and you only have to lose 10% of your body weight to make a difference. This is a beautiful statement. You see what you said? You only need to lose about 10% of the uh, body weight to make a difference. That starts to make the difference. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like to mention also, if, if you start eating the high nutrient dense diet, which we would discuss in more, you need to check your blood sugars every day. Yes. Because it can drop quickly. You may need to have your medication adjusted quickly. You need to have contact uh, with yes. your doctor. And my doctor House says when you follow his camp, he run for 30 years. When he has a, the total diet control for 14 days, he stops all oral medication on the first day. I mean, don't do that unless you're directed by your physician. The first day. And he cuts insulin in half in a week because blood sugars are just diving. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I, and I caution you to be aware of that. And uh, it can even start with a normal weight. And type 2 diabetes can start with a normal weight if your cholesterol and triglycerides are high on a genetic basis. And that's understandable. Remember what I said? Fat uh, makes the receptor site sticky and it gets in the cell and it c keeps you from opening the door uh, of, sh of uh, sugar. So a normal weight person can indeed be a type 2 diabetic. Have yes. you seen a few like that, Kathy? Yes. It, she has. It's, it's a, a, a very... Uh, uh, interesting. I was not really uh, uh, totally aware of it, but somebody asked me the question the day, matter of fact, and I gave them a lecture. But the reason is that fats are high on a genetic basis, they make the cells sticky, and they become type 2 diabetic with a normal weight. Usually not, a little thicker yeah. around the waist, though. A little thinner around yeah. the waist? Thicker. Thicker, thicker around the little waist. Thicker around the waist. Instant comment. Yeah. Remember I said fat on your waist, bad stuff, because it's inside your belly, not under your skin. It's bathing your organs. That's why a pot belly. Apple shape, very dangerous situation. Yes. Very dangerous situation. The serum insulin is the most accurate test that can predict diabetes. It's really done, really done. I order it all the time. That, that brings on pre-diabetes. Remember, the time you are diagnosed a type 2 diabetic, the time you are diagnosed with an LA blood sugar, half your pancreas is gone. Half your pancreas is gone. And you were speaking about that earlier. And, and they already have advanced vascular disease, uh, by the time they're diagnosed. Right, the time of diagnosis. Yeah, and they can have pre-diabetes 10, 15 years, time to diagnose. All that time, you may look pretty good, but your body's being destroyed inside. Is that yes. right, Kathy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, animal protein is dangerous because it carries fat. That's the reason it's dangerous. Uh, there's plenty of protein in, in, in plants. It's all the amino acids you need in plants. Uh, animal protein is high in fats and cholesterol leads to disease and inflammation. There's no cholesterol in plants. There's no in plants. Uh, it's very hard on the kidneys and liver. High protein diets are very hard on the kidneys and liver. They destroy them because it's hard to get, yes. to get uh, the proteins out of the body. The proteins are rarely used for energy. You're starving, they are, but otherwise it's really not. 
Diabetes is the most common cause of kidney disease uh, and dialysis. And I see the Dallas units below me, I see it all the time. And I know what ethnic groups and things are, uh, are getting dialyzed, and I, I see it, you know, and, 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 and you see it. Uh, so fiber is your friend. Fiber is your friend. Just keep that in mind. So you want to, high fiber foods uh, are important. That's the reason, you know, uh, celery and adamines and, and beans and, and fruits are, are so important. Yes, you can eat fruit if you're a diabetic because the, because the sucrose is metabolized in the liver. Do you limit your di type 2 diabetic patients in, in, in the amount of fruit they eat? If they, I usually encourage them to eat more vegetables, fruits that aren't starchy. Okay. So you look at apples. You know, apples are good, yeah. uh, but most of the fruits are in their natural form, yeah. not necessarily canned fruit. Yeah. You know, if they can afford yeah. the natural form, that's the yeah. best, the most fiber. Yeah, closer to nature as possible. Yes. I mean, that's a great snack, an apple, for example. Uh, and uh, do you allow them to eat uh, low-fat peanut butter? I usually tell them to eat whatever they want. It's the amount that they eat. It's always portion control. Yeah, control. I mean, on, on a thin portion wafer or size. something to have a little... For a snack at night, before they go to bed, to have sure, a little, they need to have yeah. a bedtime snack. Yeah, you, have to, you need to have some. Develop a list of snacks that are safe. Right. I think that's important for me psychologically too. Come home from a stressful day, uh, and and I need to have something ready. Right. And it can't be a donut or cookie or that's just not existing in my house. And uh, so fiber is your friend. It's a filter. If you eat 100 calories of fat, okay, 97 percent will sit on your buttocks and on your belly in four hours. If you eat a complex carbohydrate with a lot of fiber around it, you'll only absorb 60% of it. 40% will go out of your stool. So you can eat a lot of complex carbs, uh, much more food, uh, but if you eat fat, in four hours it's sitting on your belly button. They've proven it. They put needles in it and tell you whether it's lamb or beef or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. They can tell you, uh, tell you where it came from, tell you where it came from. And, uh, uh, they, and complex carbs, uh, remember 40%, the food you eat from complex carbs will never be absorbed. Uh, meat and cheeses have no fiber. That's why they're not right. good. And uh, high fiber diets are, are, are very unhealthy. So in terms of eating, what sort of eating do I really recommend? Complex, low glycemic uh, foods. You know, baked potatoes, okay. Do you yeah. allow baked diabetic potatoes, to eat baked potatoes? Right. Baked potatoes better than the mashed potato because you've broken it. Uh, yeah, and, the orange is better than the orange juice. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is very important. Uh, uh, fruit juices and things. Right. If you eat the fruit, it has fiber in it. Right. And I bet if once you, you uh, take the fiber off, it's high sugar. It's high right. sugar stuff. And uh, uh, high fiber diets are, are very healthy. Are very healthy. Be great uh, for a, a diabetic. Uh, let's talk a little bit about macronutrients. What are the fat, carbohydrates, and protein? Uh, remember, uh, uh, fat has nine calories per gram. That's nine calories per gram. Uh, carbohydrate has four calories per gram. Uh, a protein has uh, four calories per gram, so those are b better foods. The micronutrients you hear about, uh, about 22 vitamins, uh, of, uh, uh, 22 minerals, 15 vitamins, and phytochemicals, 20,000 of them, and they are the ones you get from things of color. Right. Uh, and, uh, and they uh, are the enzymes that make metabolism go, they, they, they have no calories with them. So to eat, to eat uh, like I have for lunch almost every day, high dense nutrient foods, my plate is full of things of color, and that's a big plate. That's a big plate. Never gain weight doing that, and uh, never gain weight doing that. Well, and I yeah. think the key is education. A lot of patients yeah. will eat food they think it's healthy, but you have to educate them. Yes, and, and, and I also think, in my, in my experience, and see if you agree, uh, is that if you're going to change the, uh, the way of eating of a child, I wouldn't say much. I would just buy different food. And the same with your husband. You can't. I gotta eat protein. Well, change it slowly. Maybe change his taste buds a little bit at a time, uh, and uh, and uh, they'll accept it. But, but you gotta educate them about how they eat in the schools. Maybe right. talk to the dietitian Correct. at the school. But you can't feed this to my child, and bring it up to the principal if you need to. Uh, and and they they're getting smarter about it. Schools are, are getting smarter about it. But still, if you look at the population around us, uh, obviously the educational process is at the beginning. Right. Our experience every day. If I see four people, even in neurosurgery. One of them is type 2 diabetic. It's sad. Something's missing somewhere. We, so that's the reason we're here today. And uh, your scorecard is in this situation. Uh, so you need to know your body mass index as adult, but also your children. Your teenagers, yeah. you need to know the uh, uh, BMI. Let me tell you something. Heart disease begins at what age, Kathy? Four. 
Dr. Abbott published his famous book from the Begalusa study in Louisiana, 40 years he'd been studying the autopsies, every child that died of a disease or of an accident. They found vascular disease at age four. They have found elevated LDLs at age one. So uh, if, if you don't want your children to have a heart attack in the 30s and 40s, you get to deal with it as a teenager. If they, if they look like they have normal weight, have your doctor check get a lipid profile anyway, get a metabolic profile, so you know their triglycerides, because it's at that age that these things get laid down. If they have a heart attack at 40 and you hear about these athletes or somebody dying of a stroke or heart attack at age, at age 30, when do you think the disease began? At age 30? Heck no. It began when they're little kids. Yeah. And so to, to know the figures, of if your child is eating nothing but meat and even looks skinny, check the fat level, check the cholesterol level. It's very, very important. And uh, remember, a waist measurement can be used in a child, too. Look at www.bluezones.com, a great site to look at. Uh, and they have about 30 questions. And frankly, they, they go based on the habits. And it'll tell you how long you're going to live. And, uh, and uh, you might say, well, I don't want to know that. Well, you can do something about it. That's the, right. It's an excellent site. Uh, it uh, talks about the people that live to be 100, which I give lectures on, a good site. And, and, and put some focus on their health. I've read a number of times. And, and, it, and it disappoints me a little bit, and I hope it isn't really true, but I'm afraid it's true that 60% of the people, Kathy, don't participate in their health care. That's, that's correct. That's frightening. That is frightening to me. That is frightening to me. And, uh, and you agree that's correct. Right. They yeah, need to we, be a participant. It needs to be yeah, a team effort. Yeah. And, 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 and I would say 20% of that, because I, I hear sometimes uh, in, in the lounge, at the hospital that, uh, that, that they can't be motivated. I disagree. I totally disagree. Kathy, I know you can motiv motivate them, and I, I, I feel I can motivate them. Well, if but, they participate yeah. in the plan of yeah. care, they're yeah. more likely to follow through with it. Yeah, to outline them, to make them understand, right. and to see them back. Not to say, you need to lose 20 pounds, I'll see you in a year. I see them back in a month. Right. And I get them on the scale, I measure them, I talk to them, and I, I get CDs, DVDs, and books for them to read, uh, and I educate them. I think my success rate is higher. So we can't just say 60% of the people don't wish to participate. It's partly on us. Uh, the medical school needs to graduate motivators. It don't matter how smart you are. I totally just, to me, sometimes they graduate engineers. They should have an engineering degree. That's just my radical opinion. I think it's truthful. We need to graduate motivators because uh, health is about that prescription needs to say on it, you know, what health habits you have. I, I know I'm a little passionate about it, uh, but if you want to get people well, you got to do it. When the patient figures out that I have my heart in it, I don't participate. Well, that's what I do with yeah. my patients. Yeah. I let them, I educate them, let them yeah. choose the foods they're going to eat when they come up with the plan, activities they like to do, then they'll be successful. You have to give them options. And when they choose the options, they're more successful. This is a very good words, very, very good words. And uh, uh, in other words, you, you try to work with the food that they like, but then you tell them what portions, how often right. they can have it, a little bit, that you don't, uh, but uh, I would imagine if you have a 90% meat eater now, you're gonna tell them not to eat less slow of that. Slow changes. Slow, slow changes. Uh, and uh, so how you think in this situation really is everything. And so my book on motivating people, you know, I get 38 chapters uh, instantly read. So four ways, ways of eating that, that, you know, what I teach. A vet, vegetarian, you know, uh, is one that I teach uh, where you can eat cheese, but you don't eat, don't eat any meat. I have a friend uh, who uh, is Seventh-day Adventist and from Jamaica. A lot of them are that way as well as in Utah. And, and, uh, and the Mormons are there too, of course, but they have Seventh-day Adventists there. But, you know, I checked his cholesterol. It was elevated, eating a lot of cheese. Mm -hmm. So now he doesn't eat a lot of cheese, his cholesterol came down. So pure vegetarian, but vegetarians live longer th than most of the population, about seven to 10 years. And part of the Seventh-day Adventists, I think they also teach spirituality, which is part of uh, people's lives. And I, I, I can't stress it more. And like every Saturday, they, they obey the Sabbath. My friend, I couldn't get him to do anything. That's a family day. And that's part of healing, you know what I mean? Okay. So uh, the, their diet isn't the whole thing. The Sabbath, I think, also leads to a longer life. Uh, a vegan rate of eating, don't eat meat or cheese. If you're having a serious problem, you had three heart attacks and strokes, you could type your diabetes, be a vegan. And when it's corrected, uh, totally corrected, and you want to go back to a little bit of meat and stuff like that, 
I was then, I call it a flexitarian diet. That's how I eat. 20, I'll have some shrimp, uh, occasional something, but I don't eat hamburgers or uh, steaks. I don't eat it at all. Uh, but I'll have some fish here and there a couple of days a week. Uh, flexitarian way of eating. Your figures are good. You know, you can, uh, you can uh, 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 do that. Nutritarian, high-dense nutritarian, that's Dr. Joel Furman, very famous. I go to his camp once a year for a week, and I'm looking forward to it again. He's a friend of mine, great tennis player. I beat him last year. He beat me the year before, partly because he's lecturing all day. Uh, but high-dense nutrient foods is what he recommends. And he recommends uh, it's okay to eat uh, lean meat a couple of times a week. So what's he really? Flexitarian. He's a flexitarian. There's really three ways of uh, eating and about the high-dense nutrient foods. His websites are really great to look at, drjoefurman.com. And I'm looking forward to my trip in July uh, uh, with him. And uh, it costs a little bit, but anybody can afford to go there, go to his camp. It's tremendous. And uh, uh, now there's a vegetarian. I uh, hope we can see his picture on the screen there. I met this vegetarian. Uh, uh, his name is David. That's David. And I met him in the San Diego Zoo. And uh, it was great. I was maybe half a foot from him because of glass between me and him. And he was leaning, his big silverback, leaning against the glass. And he had a red cabbage in one hand and a yellow cabbage in the other. And, uh, and he turned to one side and, and, and was going to take a bite. Then he looked me in the eye. And then, then he went to the other cabbage, looked me in the eye, and ate it. Huge. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is totally vegetarian. And uh, isn't this a neat story? So you don't have to eat animal protein. You don't have to eat it. So what does nutrient dense mean? Remember we talked about ferments of work, nutrient dense. Uh, what does calorie dense mean? Uh, food processing concentrates calories. That's calorie dense. You know, you start stripping of all the stuff uh, and the white rice and the white, the white bread. That's calorie dense food. Uh, French fry, calorie dense food. Corn flakes are five times more dense than corn itself. You take the, you take the uh, wall off of the thing, you take the fiber off of the thing, the, the, the bran off it, and, uh, and uh, uh, then it's much more dense and much more uh, dangerous. Uh, uh, beans are the best things in the world you can eat. If you're a bean eater, you're going to lose weight like anything. High protein, uh, complex carbs, got some omega-3. Beans, indeed, are a health food. And what would you say about that, Kathy? Definitely. A lot of uh, fiber. A lot of fiber there. You're not going to absorb all that food. Maybe 60% will ever hit your bloodstream. And uh, that's a quick way to, to lose weight. You love beans. There's so many different types of beans uh, to really, uh, I think this is a, a great, great uh, uh, habit. And uh, you want to avoid nutrient-dense foods. Nutrient-dense foods, uh, whole grains. Uh, let's talk about this some more. Whole grains. So if you, if you eat whole grain, I mean, I recommend complex carbohydrates, 100% whole grain. Yes. Don't go in between. The other label is five grain. That's not 100% whole grain. It's got to say 100% whole grain, then it's whole grain. Pumpernickel is 100% whole grain. Uh, black bread, but some breads are tanned. So you have to watch, you know, watch out for that. Uh, uh, vegetables, fruits. Uh, to me, the way I teach it, frankly, uh, you've got to watch a little bit of type 2 diabetic, but it's all you can eat, essentially. I don't have people count calories or portion control. If you eat low glycemic foods, 50% uh, or less, 100% whole grain, vegetables, beans, and fruit, uh, most of the time you can get away with eating all you can. You're going to lose weight on it. Right. If that's, a, that's the fermented way of eating. And if you eat that way 100%, you lose about a pound a day. It's right in Fermin's book. You would not believe it. That's 3,500 calories. But it happened to me. I weighed 157. I went to his camp. 12 days I ate. 145 under the camp. And I've done it a number of times since. A few pounds go back. But like I said, I eat 80% that way. Don't have to be 100%. And uh, uh, citrus fruits and peppers. Peppers are excellent uh, uh, foods. Broccoli and cruciferous vegetables are very, very healthy. And the reason they call them cruciferous because as, as, as uh, plants, uh, their flowers look like a cross. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and, and eat a few nuts a day. Dr. Furman will eat one to two ounces of nuts a day. Mm -hmm. And you think, geez, that's a lot of calories because uh, uh, nuts are a little bit fatty. So he, uh, uh, an ounce a day is what I would stick with. Or if you need a, a little snack, you have six nuts. I eat them. Stops the appetite. Five minutes, you're not hungry anymore in, uh, in my experience. But he says two ounces can be okay because it decreases your appetite so much you don't eat the regular food as much. Right. And actually, it's a way of losing weight to eat more nuts than usual. But don't eat a whole handful. I mean, uh, I had a relative type 2 diabetic, and he was say, eating a handful a day. But, you know, he said, what's your waist measurement? He was, came down the basement of my house. He said, oh, 36. So I got the tape measure. My wife's walking down the stairs saying, what are you doing, really? And I measured his waist, 42 inches. <laughs> 
So he shows me his, his uh, genes, you know, it says 36. Don't believe those guys, <laughs> 36. We had a little to do because he's type 2 diabetic. Mm -hmm. And he called me the, the other day, he's having eye trouble. A very serious situation, a lot of history of type 2 diabetes outside the family. They need to do something. Uh, and uh, so to eat some raw nuts and seeds for the omega-3, the good fat. I see, you need the good fats to run the intel chips of your body. Before we had a, the bloodstream, uh, the, the living things before that, uh, ran on the uh, cosinoids. The uh, cosinoids. Those are the intel chips of your body. Uh, they jump from cell to cell. That's the omega-3. Barry Sears in his books, although I don't recommend his diet, particularly it's too high protein, he does have great discussions on icosinoids. Ico means, it means 20, uh, 18. And, uh, and, uh, and those are the essential fatty acids that are important uh, to run our, our cellular walls and are very important. They're the intel chips of your body. So essential fatty acids are important. We need a certain amount of it. But you can get it from taking some HDL and some, right. you know, some different... Uh, uh, supplements uh, and uh, fish oil uh, like flaxseed. Furman likes flaxseed. Uh, Barry Sears likes uh, uh, fish oil. A little debate about that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I think a supplement like that is very important. I, I particularly recommend smoothies in the morning. I have one a day. Yes. You can get a blender and dump all the fruits in there and blend it up and add some flaxseed. And I drank it this morning. That's all I need for breakfast. Yes. I wasn't hungry till noon. So to have a smoothie every other day, great habit. Do you take smoothies? Do you I do. And I, uh, do. I put yogurt in. And I put yogurt yes. in them, low fat, yeah. Tell us about yogurt a minute. Uh, what type of yogurt do you recommend? Uh, Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt? Yes. Uh, is it no, uh, no fat, get, no sugar? What? Uh, it's very low fat, high protein. Is but that right? you have to acquire a taste. It's kind of on the thick side, like sour cream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've had it too. And I, I, you get used to it. I, just I like plain it. yogurt. Yeah, just plain yogurt. Add your own food yeah. if you're going to. Got to look at the, the uh, sugar labels and the, and the yeah, fat labels. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad I asked that. Uh, and uh, uh, what, so what, what do we recommend? The daily intake, we talked about it already. 60% low glycemic index carbs, 20% protein, mainly from plants, 20% uh, fat from nuts and seeds. And supplements, maybe take a, a, a vitamin, some vitamin D, uh, uh, a multivitamin. Uh, anything else you recommend as a supplement regularly? I think the vitamin D is very important. Yeah. Very important. And uh, anything else you recommend? Uh, fish you, oil. Yeah. yeah Nothing that, more than I recommend it. You don't recommend 100 supplements. And, no. Yeah, basic. Exactly. I see people with, with uh, taking too many supplements, and I, and I have found they developed uh, neuropathies from it. I saw a, a, a well-known gentleman in town recently he was taking 100 supplements, and, and he was starting to lose the power of his lower extremities. Peripheral neuropathy. It's the action of all those uh, chemicals. Uh, make vegetables the foundation of your meals. I think it's a very important point. It's quite easy for me because I have the doctor's lounge prepared now. Right. I eat high-dense nutrient foods, breakfast, I have a smoothie one day, oatmeal the next. You know, and, uh, and actually I went to a restaurant that, that generally serves breakfast food in a crushable. I tell you, I can order oatmeal, I can order blueberries, I have some grapes on top of that, some strawberries, very healthy breakfast. Right. You just got to ask for it. Right. Most restaurants will give you what you ask for. Right. You have it, to ask. You have to ask. Uh, and, and, and almost every restaurant. Right. And remember one thing, you can, you can get mad at fast food restaurants, okay? We can get mad at them. But I'll tell you honestly, what you ask for, they will get eventually. Right. If, 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 we, if we could go to one of the fast food restaurants and, and we're ordering mainly beans and fruits and vegetables, what do you think they'd have? That's how they make money. Right. They're, they're not going to serve the nasty food. They're serving, some of them are serving nasty food because we asked for it. Well, it's still a choice when you go to a fast food it's restaurant. A you can yeah. choose a healthier alternative. Yeah, a lot of them have healthy it's alternatives now. Yeah, matter of fact, I, I found a uh, vegetarian restaurant across town by Glenbrook, right? Close to past North Side High School right there, uh, is, a, is a vegetarian mm -hmm. restaurant. And, uh, and, and uh, they make wonderful five different soups uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, a, a wonderful uh, 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 restaurant. And we're going to see more of that, you know, yes. around, uh, some more choice. It's the coming thing. I met uh, John Mackey, president of Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. I don't mind mentioning it. Uh, he labels every food. Every food has got a number on it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very healthy. I had breakfast with him three times at the Furman camp. And, uh, and uh, he emailed me. Matter of fact, he read, he read my book on the diabetes. He really loved it. And I think he's going to sell it in his stores. Uh, and... Uh, and he follows that way of eating. They both look perfect. I'm looking forward to meeting them again in July. John Mackey Whole Foods, very excellent, excellent uh, place to shop. And 20% uh, fat, nuts and seeds, supplements we talked about. 
make vegetables foundation of, of, your, of your meals. And the, my patients that can, I try to encourage them to graze through the day six smaller meals rather than large meals if they can eat sort of like imagining your body as a furnace. If you put a large log in there, it's going to take a lot of burn. But if you put little pieces of kindling all day long, you get the fire going and you lose more weight. Wonderful. And, and that's the energy of metabolism of the yes. food. Going to, uh, yeah. and, and let me tell you this thing too. Uh, uh, I think we'll end up with exercise here eventually, but every pound of muscle you can put on your body eats of 50 calories a day without even moving. That's why muscle mass is quite important uh, in all of us because it eats up calories even when you don't use them. You use them even you lose more. And uh, a very important thing to remember in case we don't get to that. Uh, exercise is very important. Uh, and, uh, and tell us a little bit, uh, to be sure that we get to that today, you would tell, because a lot of people lose a lot of weight, they wonder about their skin. And you told me a very interesting thing. Tell me your experience about that. Um, I started losing weight at age 45, but I exercised every day, walking, weights, whatever I could do to exercise. And the more you exercise as you lose, the more your skin tightens. Because a lot of patients that have surgical weight loss, bariatric surgery, they lose weight so quickly that they have a lot of loose skin. And I never had that problem, but I exercised a lot. And I encourage my patients to do something every day. Could be walking, um, dancing, biking, whatever they want to do, whatever they are able to do. But that really makes a difference. What wonderful words, what wonderful words. Uh, that exercise, and, and, and look at her today. There's not an ounce of extra skin there. And that's uh, a real great concern to, to uh, many women and, and, and men and perfectly understandable. You know, you lose 50 pounds, you get a bunch of skin hanging there, it's upsetting. But if you, what, what did she say? If you exercise regularly, that does not happen. And be uh, active, it's the yeah, activity. Yeah, activity level. And uh, let's look about maybe uh, snack. You can, and when you snack, use some raw vegetables, maybe uh, there are plenty of books that have uh, nice, uh, tasty dips in them. A large salad with a variety of vegetables. And I, I, mean, I love it myself. My wife fixes this huge salad with berries and nuts and all kind of stuff. And man, it fills me very quickly. And, uh, and uh, here's a couple of little funny sayings here. If you're not willing to kill it, don't eat it. If it doesn't have a mother or a face, uh, don't eat it. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, okay. And uh, uh, beans, of course, are resistant starches. They're full of fiber, uh, and you can eat a lot of them. And they have a lot of protein, a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals uh, inside of beans. A pound of vegetables, listen to this. A pound of vegetables, beans, uh, and, and, uh, have only 100 calories, have a lot of volume. I, I mean, a, a pound has 100 calories, that's all. And they fill you up. You're, you're not hungry. Fiber. Yeah, a lot of fiber in there. And uh, I particularly like uh, Adamanis, you can get them at a restaurants now. One of my favorite restaurants here is Stop Carrying Them. And, uh, and uh, uh, that, that's maybe uh, uh, in our little time left. Uh, uh, fruits are nature's perfect food. You know, they're nature's perfect food. And our, pr our closest primate ancestors eat, eat fruit, uh, and that's what you should be eating. Uh, they don't have heart attacks. Uh, and uh, can you imagine a, mo a monkey doesn't have a heart attack? He's a vegetarian, and that's the reason it works. And uh, uh, let's talk about exercise a little bit. Uh, sort of the end, end the program on that. I think a diabetic should exercise at least twice a day. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, it's very smaller it's, times so they can yeah. get uh, a larger amount added up. Because sometimes yeah. you, people want to do yeah. something for 30 minutes. They don't have yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe 50. We can walk. Maybe the overweight. 15 minutes, three, four times a day right. would be great. And increase your muscle mass. You can double and triple your muscle mass into your 90s. Into your 90s. A lot of people don't realize that. So when I see elderly patients especially, and it, that improves the metabolism of the body. So in, in, in summary, uh, really, what, what are we talking about? Type 2 diabetes can be eliminated, I think, in 90% of the time in about uh, 60 days. Dr. Franklin House thinks it's 30 days. And I wish you good luck. I hope you, you, you want to get this monkey off your back. We want you not to have these diseases that we spoke about. And thank you very much for uh, participating in our, our program and we'll have some more of them and these products that we have these books and dvds and cds we got all cds dvds and books available at the mind body institute of lufan hospital and kathy works 10 feet above my office and we thank you very much for appearing with me today thank you